Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. We're doing a discus update again. So, if you have been following along, you might remember I've got a little bit of a breeding project going on. So we've had some successes and some failures along the way. Basically, if you look, there'll be a playlist linked somewhere, you can see them going through the stages of laying eggs and eating the eggs, laying eggs again, not eating them, getting wrigglers and eating the wrigglers, laying eggs, getting wrigglers, getting free swimmers and eating the free swimmers. So, as you can see, there's a bit of a process going on here. I have been trying to be as hands-off as possible. Now, if I was a commercial breeder, I would be doing everything I could to optimize the situation here, but I just wanted to see what's happening. It's all about a bit of a learning process. So they've had free swimmers now successfully for about two and a half, three weeks, something like that. And that's roughly around the time where I'd be thinking about separating the fry. I kind of want to be led by the fish themselves. So if I see the fry swimming around away from the parents more often, if I see the fry still feeding off the slime coat of the parents and it's annoying them, that's another sign to get them out. Uh, the fry feeding readily off things that aren't the parents' slime coat. We're, we've hit all those markers, but I've noticed something else which is another potential problem. But one of the problems I can see now is that they are cleaning the cone and trying to lay eggs again. So obviously I want to give these fish the best chance that I can give them to survive. So we're going to get the fry out of there before the parents start to freak out because I know as soon as they lay eggs, they'll start picking off the fry. They have been eating baby brain shrimp and decapsulated brain shrimp. So I think we've got a chance of success. So I've set up this tank over here, got it up to the right temperature and we're going to now try and fish out the fry. Then the parents can get on with laying their eggs and not be bothered by the fry, not freak out and start eating them, picking them off, anything like that. So it's just a case of as quickly as possible getting in there, getting as many of the fry and moving them across. Which I shall do now. So the fry are kind of all over the tank, they're not really staying around the parents so I'm hopeful that I can get most of them with one quick swoop because if it needs more than one it will probably be quite difficult because if the parents freak out when they see the net coming in the fry will generally take their lead from the parents and follow suit, freaking out So, that was quite successful actually I've got most of them out. Now, the easiest way would be to get them into some kind of container and then move that container across, but as I'm only moving them to there, I'm hopeful that I can just do a quick whoosh, whoosh, done. So I just want to have a quick count. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We did have 12 a few days ago. I did notice a couple had dropped off, but they were the weaker looking ones. So here goes, out and in. So hopefully that wasn't too stressful for them and they'll be okay. So that's them in the new tank, they're quite small but they don't seem to be overly affected by anything so I can just let them out. Obviously all the water parameters are exactly the same. It's the same water in here. Come on, out you come. One last one doesn't want to come out. There we go, successful transfer. I found another three or four, so I think we're back up to the full complement of 12 uh, fry in that tank moved across. But I just wanted to take a moment to say, remember the parents. It's kind of natural you want to concentrate on the tiny fry, because they're so tiny and little, and they need all the help they can get and all that good stuff. But raising fry for the parents, it's actually really stressful and really demanding. So <laughs> even though they've gone straight back into laying eggs, I don't get it with these two. But anyway. Because they're so prolific, producing eggs, laying eggs, rearing fry, protecting fry, it can be quite stressful, quite demanding. So I want to make sure that I give these guys as much love as I give the fry. And one of the best ways you can do that is lots of water changes, obviously. Give them nice, clean, fresh water. Um, you'll notice this tank is a bit grubby, but it's algae and stuff on the sides. That really doesn't bother me. I am regularly changing the water in here. And we'll talk about water parameters in a bit, but give them very clean water and then give them a good diet. So I like to give them lots of treats and things like this at the moment. So all the arguments about beef heart and discus and all that, I'm not really bothered about that. I mean, things like I've got some 
life is here, so I've got a load of adult brain shrimp. So I'm going to give them that. It's really good for them. It's high protein. They love it, so it's going to work well for them. But just making sure that they've got everything they need to keep their strength up while they go back into laying eggs. So my process for this is to find my little net. Where is it there? I've got this little net. I pour the brain shrimp out through the net because we don't want this mucky water in there. And then we have a little net full of brain shrimp, which I can just dump into the tank. And that is a good, tasty little treat for them. Uh, and when they notice that, they'll come across and they'll nab some of them up, as you can see. They quite enjoy. And it's really good for them. So that's the best we can do for them, is keeping them happy and healthy. I don't want to be continually breeding these fish either, so while I might want to try and refine this process and see how good they get at raising fry, it's just not great for them to be cooped up in here for months and months on end. So they will go back in the display tank eventually, hopefully give them a bit of a break. But while they want to lay constantly, who am I to stop them? So, good job so far guys. Over in this tank, we have all the fry. So now the onus is on me, rather than the parents, to be the primary caregiver for these fry and see how long they last. So in reality, this is where the hard work begins because these guys need to be eating constantly. Again, I've got them in a tank that does have algae on the walls. It, there, it is an aged tank, so there will be things floating around in there, infusoria, that kind of stuff. So there will be things in there that they can eat, but it just won't be enough. Baby brain shrimp to the rescue, as well as this stuff, which is like gold dust. I think it's really important. This is decapsulated brain shrimp eggs, so you don't need to make it. You don't need to brew your brain shrimp. It is just like a dust, again, just as good quality and nutritionally. And I just sprinkle it in and let it go and they pick it off readily. I think it's really important that you do this while the parents are still with them so as they can have the option of feeding off the parents or them and they get used to this and realise it's food. One of the problems you can get if you just all of a sudden switch to this stuff is it's obviously it's just the eggs, they don't move around, they don't trigger any hunting instincts or anything like that. So they need to know it's food to know to go for it. And as you can see, they start picking this stuff off and after a while, once they've had enough of it, you can actually tell by looking at the fish themselves and you see their little bellies will have a red tinge to them so you know they're getting enough food. So that's all well and good, I've got the brain shrimp eggs in there, I've also feed them my patented fry food which is basically every tub of food that I've got, when you get down to the bottom of it you just get the dust left, I collect that in another one and then just sprinkle that dust in as well so you get a variety of foods and you keep them going like that. But the king of discus rearing foods is this stuff. So this is my baby brain shrimp hatchery. Um, you might have seen these as branded as the Zis hatcheries or the aquarium co-op hatcheries. I can't remember what they call them over here, but it's the same thing. My process is fill this with water. I do four spoonfuls of rock salt like this. Get the air in running, dissolve all the rock salt, and then a big heat spoonful of, not this because this is encapsulated, but brain shrimp eggs, which I keep outside so they keep cool. This has been going for just over two days now. And you can kind of tell when it goes this sort of colour that we've got stuff in there. I've just turned the air off, so I'm just going to allow it to settle a little bit. I use this light down here to not work properly, to kind of attract everything to the bottom. And then there's this kind of spouty bit where I can drain it off, but I tend not to use that. Um, I just wait for everything to settle so as I can collect it and I just use a big turkey baster to catch them. And then with my ridiculously sized turkey baster, I can just pop that in and get right down to the fish as well. Put out some baby brain shrimp. And because the baby brain shrimp actually move around, it kind of triggers that hunting instinct. And you can see, well, I don't know if you can't see because they're so small, but that drives them wild when they go for it. Good. So, all I need to do now is repeat that eight times a day. And that I think is one of the main difficulties with breeding discus is because it is so demanding, they need feeding so often, otherwise they just drop off at a rate of knots and you really need to be on top of it. It's lucky that I actually work down here in my fish room, so my desk's just over there. I can do that. I can be out here feeding them every other hour. 
for a few weeks uh, until they start taking bigger bits of food and it lasts them a bit longer. But yeah, for the next couple of weeks, this is going to be quite intensive. I fully expect to probably lose a good bunch of these um, because I'm rusty. I, I might forget. I might not be able to keep on top of it, but we'll try. We'll try our best. So a word on water parameters. Um, like I say, this experiment is it's more geared towards just finding out what happens if I don't mess with anything. Because one of the biggest things anyone that gets into discus breeding is chasing water parameters. This is a new pair, so that in and of itself affects yield, but the water parameters also play a part in that. I'm not using any RO water or anything like that. This is just straight tap water through an HMA filter. So the TDS, my TDS pen is broken, but the last time I measured it, it was round about 140. And um, the pH, when I measured today, it was 6.4. The GH, general hardness was four degrees and carbonate hardness was 1.5. So the KH and GH, I've kind of landed in a decent place there but the important point is that I haven't manufactured any of that it just is what it is so this is more an experiment to see whether or not the parents themselves get better and better at laying more and more eggs I've noticed that so the first clutch of eggs that we had was quite small and they've been getting bigger and bigger each time whether or not they get more and more fry through that first stage of going on to being free swimmers they have done that. This is the first lot that I've got to the stage of moving them into their own grow out tank. So we'll just see. I guess that's what we're playing at. But for those of you that wanted to know the parameters, that's what they're at. So we'll leave you now with a quick shot of the next phase of the discus breeding project. So that's the latest instalment in this. If you're interested in following along, you like this kind of thing, click that subscribe button down below. You can see how we get on in the weeks and months to come. I think it's one of the most fantastic sights in the fish keeping hobby is any kind of breeding but discus breeding especially I think is extra special um, we've just flipped past 20,000 subscribers on the channel so if you're new here welcome thanks for joining along um, Friday nights 9pm UK time we do a live stream with some quizzes and games and things like that so come along to that and say hello if you are new or if you are interested in subscribing like I say there's a button down there thank you bye